My name is Christian Abel Morso. That, that is the name that was given to me by my father, Norval Morso, and my mother, Harriet Morso. This man here, right here, is my father, Norval Morso. Norval is the one who created this artwork in this form. And he was given the name Zaapu uh, Kmes, which means uh, Copper Thunderbird in our language. It wasn't easy living with Norval. It was fun sometimes, but it wasn't easy because of alcoholism. When I was about four or five years old, my father and my mother had gotten a divorce. When my father had left, he had taken uh, me and my sister Lisa and put us in a children's home in Red Lake, in Ontario. Stuff I went through in that children's home as a five-year-old was just the same thing that my brothers and sisters and my fathers went through. The By the time I got into grade seven, I was about nine years old. It was the first drink I ever had. God, did I ever love it. it took everything away. It made me feel good. And when I started drinking, I started getting aggressive. I started uh, pushing back. I started pushing back. And the principal started noticing. And I was sitting there alone with her and she looks at me. She tells me, you're the dirtiest, ugliest person I ever met. I end up uh, getting into a domestic with uh, my wife and I end up being sent to Kenora for my very first time I ever tried to uh, try to deal with my alcoholism that I had uh, that I started at the age of 10. I remember uh, walking out of the uh, Morningstar uh, detox center and I began walking in Kenora there's a big musky fish there on the side of the river there and once I got to that musky uh, fish there I felt the desire that uh, I may have lost my family, I may have lost my children, I may have lost my job and everything. So it came over to me to where I offered tobacco in front of that fish and I said a prayer. I said, Grandfather, if you ever, ever give me another chance to learn, to listen, and to understand what my father is trying to teach me, I won't waste my time. When I first started painting, I didn't know uh, how to sign my name just like my father did. He used to just write uh, NM or no remorse on it. And until he met my mother, then my mother was actually the one who told him, uh, stop signing your name in English on these paintings. The paintings that you do are actually uh, from the Anishinaabe people. So sign your name as, as it should be. My father didn't know how to sign his name in the syllabic, so my mother showed him. My father always had uh, told me, you know, when we come from the spiritual world, that the grandfathers, the four spiritual grandfathers, they know who we are, they know who we're going to be, they know what our purpose is, and they know when we're going to come back again. Uh, my father, when he began to teach and preach and, and share with the rest of the world back in the early 60s, he wrote the Bible of the woodland art. He's the one who created this form of art. Before him, there was nothing. There was no pictures, there was no scrolls, there was nothing out there, no teaching, nothing, because of the spiritual taboo that was put on our, our people. You guys can uh, start with that, do the image. Uh, the colors that you have, just because I, I have these colors on here, you don't have to follow my colors. 
The reason why I have these colors here before me is because they were the colors nearest to the door before I walked out of my studio. You know, it's... <laughs> it's right now, tonight, you are students of my apprentices. And what I always tell them, tonight, for now, don't be in love. Just put the damn paint on the cabinet, all right? If you try to be an artist, you're gonna get discouraged. The best thing about the woodland art that we do is you cannot make a mistake. There's no such thing as a mistake. Some paintings that I do does take time. Some paintings are meant to come out just now. We all work in our own different speed. And I think the speed has to actually do with uh, the beginning, the way you think that it should be in the beginning. When I start an image, I have no idea what it's gonna be. You know, it's, uh, but it's basically once I put the pencil to, to the canvas and let it go, and that's when, when I begin to uh, see what's coming out. And as I, as I begin to sketch it and look at it, I begin to realize the stories and the legends that my father uh, had told me some of it. Sometimes I think it's gonna be this or it's gonna be that, or, but uh, it's not always, not always up to me what's actually gonna be coming out of, out of me as well. The real thing is, this is not just a painting. These images here came from where I came from. They came from the spiritual world. They came from the grandfathers. These images here are alive over there. Because it comes from the grandfathers in the spiritual world, this is what it is. It's a scroll. These are icons. These are traditional teachings, ceremony teachings, legends and everything. The image is already set over here into my heart and into my mind and uh, I know where all the lines are going to be or where, uh, or where uh, things are, are going to be so when I do it I don't necessarily just uh, keep every little image there. But you know, I'll, I'll cover up the, uh, you know, the branch leaves, or you know, even leave a couple feathers, feathers there. If not, just get rid of the all the petals and leave the center of, of it. Because, uh, like I said, I already know that the image has has already been given to me, and now that it has been given to me, now I can start the process of uh, applying applying the paint. I had a grandfather, mate, and he lost three sons before he passed away. And my, my grandfather told me, it's so hard to lose a son because you believe and you trust that they're gonna live longer than you are. And then you end up burying them before you're gone. That's the worst pain any man could ever get. That's the pain I, I know now. I buried my father and I buried my son already. But I'm still here, I'm still here for a reason. The spiritual grandfathers knew me as Keikat the Pitang. And they knew why I was supposed to come here. My father had a purpose. My father had a masterpiece, Man Changes into Thunderbird. Maybe this is my masterpiece. Maybe not, I don't know. The reason why I did this painting here was in honor because of my son that I had lost recently. This in particular painting that is before me here I had no idea I would ever do this. Not until all the recommendations came out, the 145 recommendations that came out. 
The day after it came out, I woke up four o'clock in the morning and I walked out these doors here. And I began to think of my son and I felt there was a big void in my life still that I uh, wasn't able to, it's not done. And what my plans are for this painting is to uh, gift it to the Prime Minister. Not only him, but to gift it to Canada. I had no idea what was going to come out, but I trusted in the spirits and the grandfathers to give me the image that I needed. The reason why I'm gifting it is so that the pain and the hardship that each and every family that lost a child out of all of these children that went through the inquest don't go in vain. My father always told me, if you have anything good to say, anything good to share, or anything good to teach, always make sure it's from your heart. This line here represents a branch, just a branch of the tree of life. And it comes down into Kyle, and it goes into his body, and it connects us to Kyle, to all the other children. And it comes over here, and it connects us, and it comes out again. And it's going back home where it came from. And where it came from is right here, in the middle of everything. In my statement, I said, I believe each and every one of these children are wearing a crown of flowers. But these children here, they look down at us with a crown of flowers. So that's why I put all these flowers that began from here, from the tree of life, the very first day that they were born. And this shows their whole life, their connection together until they go home. And this is their home. This is where they are right now. And when their spirit left their body, they transform into a little bird, a white bird. This is them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're flying up. They're going home. They're going home. Right here. This is where they're all going to go to. I'm really grateful for uh, all the work that uh, each and every lawyer did uh, in taking part in this inquest. I know by uh, testifying in the inquest, it was very painful for me to uh, bring up these old wounds of, uh, of my son. Uh, it wasn't until actually the, uh, at the end when all the uh, recommendations actually came out to where I, uh, I woke up the next morning in, uh, around 4 o'clock before the sun ro rose and I, I sat there and I knew I needed to uh, wanted to take those 145 recommendations and try to get it into the uh, the Prime Minister's office. And I uh, rolled out a piece of uh, eight feet uh, canvas by four feet canvas. And I, I had no idea what was coming out, but I, I just kept the pencil leading the way, letting the spirits take forward. And uh, what it came out first was uh, the one in the middle, Robin Harper. She is... Uh, also from the same community as I am, and uh, the first one to, uh, uh, that we had lost in our community. More on a personal note, I guess, I just want to thank each and every one of you, and you're, you guys did a great job. I need to make sure that, uh, that this painting does get into the, uh, the hands of the Canadian people. I don't want uh, all these tears and all these hardships that me and all the other families went through 
uh, during the inquest uh, to, to go in vain because uh, those were real tears. Those, that was real pain that each and every one of us went through. So. My late son, who I, I lost, had a great idea back in uh, 2008. He ran upstairs and he came back downstairs with a painting of his that he did. And uh, he had said, Dad, when, when you do, you go to your art show again, look for the youngest person, the youngest person in the art show and bless him with my painting, he says, that Kyle did. Unfortunately, Kyle's not here today, so, but either way, I still want to keep that tradition that he had asked me to do, so if I can ask uh, little Harriet to come up, I would love to bless her with a painting. This painting here is called The uh, Ojibwe Child. So, here you go, little girl. Okay. Okay. She's looking around there. <laughs>